guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to be trying to use these. So when I was moving I wanted to take less paper and less books with me so I went through the magazines and picked out a couple pages from each one that I really liked and stacked them in here and I thought that this would be a great way to do one source challenges. So I'm just going to go through and look at a couple of these and see if there's anything that really appeals to me. So the beauty of a challenge like this is that it just kind of opens up your mind to using less or something different. Okay, so let's through the piles, and this woman just kind of really caught my eye. So let's see what we can do with these four images. Because I make the rules as well, uh, I might want to add in some wording maybe after, so I'll take a look at some other things and so far I think I have an idea of how I can use these things and maybe I can even use the back of her after this to make a negative, uh, depending on what it looks like. What I have in mind is her, for sure. I like this um, leopard, but I think it's too big for what we're doing here. Maybe I can take these trees or something. I definitely want to use it in something else, but maybe just not for this. Um, and this writing is kind of cool. So I want some texture. But I think what I'm thinking is I'll cut out this as well, and maybe the hand will be like holding the ballerina. So let's give it a shot and just see what comes of it. I think it'd be kind of cool if she was balancing on one of these and maybe I have to intertwine her more into the background like maybe I don't want her to be getting bit but maybe it's like this is behind uh, her or her foot is behind something just so she's like leveraging like that um, but maybe we'll cut this out first and then see playing around with the strawberry but it just kind of blends in and I kind of don't I think it's kind of cheating when you just change someone's face uh, for the sake of it so I think that I'm gonna go without the strawberry it's not like her hands are anywhere where I can put them um, and this green part just blends into the back there's not really a good contrast and I don't really see the purpose of it it's not adding any value so I think that this is what I like so far. Um, I might cheat a little bit and just look through a couple things. I feel like she's looking at something. So I don't know if I can find something that will work for this. Maybe this gets moved over and there's something here for her to look at. I'm not sure. Let's 
Let's just take a look at some other things, and I'll set this to the side so that I can use it another time. I literally just had this cut out, just sitting basically in a pile right next to this. Um, and I kind of like it. It kind of like ballerina is the classic dream for a lot of uh, young people. So I think that that's something that's kind of interesting. And doing this makes the finger have to be at the edge. And I really didn't like that the knuckle was missing just because of that advertisement that had like the wording that was there. So I kind of like where this is going now. Like I think that kind of sweet and it's you know it has a good meaning and I'm not sure what the Venus flytraps mean like maybe it's about getting caught up in like real life and she's being plucked out to follow her dreams and because no one really not that many people go on to be a ballerina even though that's a, a big dream of a lot of young people A lot of people dream of being other things, and one of those ones that I want to talk about is being an artist. I feel like a lot of people have this stigma around an artist not being a real job, but it definitely is, and I see a lot of people around me pursuing their dreams, and it's just not seen as something that you can do because it takes so much work to get there. But I promise you, if you're working towards it right now, that it's worth it. I'm on my year three of trying to uh, become an artist now, I would say. Uh, 2023 is where I mark the beginning of my third year, and I just feel like there's so much to come for this year and so many more things that'll come in the future. Now, I just want to clarify I'm talking about artists as a full time job versus an artist as a label. Uh, I do believe that every person who practices art is an artist, as I've said in my other videos. But one thing I think we often forget is that in different times, there were people who were full-time artists everywhere, and they were very appreciated. For example, in the long ago, there were stonemasons, and they would start at very young ages, like eight years old. And they would go work under an apprentice or work for someone else, uh, find ways to be a studio assistant, etc., at a really young age. And they would just work and work and work at it until they were the best of the best. And that's a pretty easy way to get in, right? Now it's like we have to find other jobs, we have to practice on the side, and then if you get good enough, make the right connections with the side gig, then you're allowed to do it full time. But that just really wasn't the case in prior periods of time. After industrialization, we really didn't need these skills anymore, as I'll just keep using my example of stonemasonry. So we were kind of in this stage of losing the arts that we used to have traditionally, and the arts are trying to find a way to stay relevant uh, in our today's society. We can no longer just show up to some artist's home and be an apprentice from day one and learn their craft and learn their skill and then go off and do our own thing. We need to like practice as much as we can in our own spare time and find whatever it is that we're looking for practice on the side, push for these new gigs, and it's just, it's a lot of work, right? So I think that rather than thinking that artist is not a job, it's more that the work that has to go into creating a job for art is just way beyond a degree or way beyond just working in an office for a little bit. It's just, it takes up years and years of work, and that's why I don't think we have as many masters of art as we used to. Reading about artists in the past just makes me a little bit jealous sometimes because they have these beautiful homes with beautiful gardens, exotic pets, weird trips and all these things, and they just did it because they had the time and they could fully indulge in their life of being an artist. And I feel like I have to kind of do this secret spy double life with my art and my normal work and life balance. I don't really know if there's a solution to it, but my best solution is that I just love to dedicate as much time to my practice as I possibly can, and that brings me a lot of peace. It always makes me so content to make an artwork that really put me down a rabbit hole of thought, and this piece definitely did that, and I'm going to call it the dreamer because of that. I think this piece is really special, and it has a great meaning behind it, and Overall, I just love that it's from one source as well, besides the text. Uh, I love these uh, Venus fly traps. I think they're great meaning just to show that, you know, things are going to bite and try to bring you in, but you have your dreams and you can do what you want with them. 
As always, thanks for watching and please subscribe to see more videos.